Welcome everyone back to the channel and if you're new here, welcome. Today we're going to be having a little fun video by writing our own assembly functions. I have this little GUI here that I've made that goes through the basic fetch, decode, and execute cycle from RAM that we actually write. We're not going to be building this GUI here, so I've linked the code in the comment section below. So feel free to just grab it and start following along with me. Keep in mind this program is not perfect. There are plenty of bugs to go around for everyone, so just follow it along and we'll see what we can do. So just a rundown of how this program works, what we do is we actually write our own RAM, and this is basically a program, and what happens in this main function is we create a root variable from TK, and we actually create a program from the program class using all this data. And then we create a window object, which is the GUI actually that you see here from the root and the program. So basically what you see here and the back end are two completely separate things. This window here has nothing to do with actually how the program works. It basically just tells it when to execute and gives us a visual idea of what's going on. It'll help you a lot through this video if you have a basic understanding of how very simple assembly works. So just to get started off, what we do is we initialize it to load everything. You'll notice we have program registers here, an instruction counter, and a program counter. And basically that we're going to say fetch grabs the index from the program counter in RAM and stores it in the instruction register. So the zeroth index of RAM is 1040. If we actually decode it, that means load the value into A. So first of all, how does it know what load A is and what is the value? So if we come down here in this code, we basically define arbitrarily that the first two digits are the actual function we're going to be running and the last two digits of this value, this 1040, is the actual number. So just arbitrarily we said, hey, 10 means load the value 40 into the A register. So if we actually execute it, that becomes 40, and the program counter increments by 1. Let's go on to the next one, 2015. 20 means load B, and we can see that once we decode it, we get load B, and execute stores 15 in the B register. We keep on doing this when we see that 30 load 0, which is the exact same thing we had before, and 4009 is load D. It's going to load 9 into this block here. We have a special command, which is 60, which means jump to the 7th index of RAM as the next value of the program counter. So when we hit fetch, it's going to grab the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th value of RAM, which is 1018, into the instruction register. So that's just very basic stuff that we start with. So we have load A, B, C, and D. And what we're going to be doing in this video is actually writing our own functions to sort of supplement what we actually started with. So let's go ahead and close this window down and let's slide down here in this program class to where we see all these def. So we have def load A, load B, load C, load D. We're going to add our own function called add. And what add is going to do is take the value, so let's just start add, and we're going to say that add adds the value of the first two registers, so self.reg of 0 plus self.reg1. So it's going to add these two values and store them in the address of the second opcode. So here we have the first opcode, which is the first two digits of the value from RAM, and the second opcode is the second two. So we're going to say that self.ram at the index of self.op2. Now that looks like a big block of code, but all it's saying is that at the opcode2 value, we're going to be storing in RAM the sum of registers 0 and 1. And you'll see how this works down the road. So for the first step in actually making our own function is to define it in these def functions. This is about as low level as we get. The next thing we're going to do is say that once we actually encounter an opcode, so if opcode 1 equals whatever number we want it to, so this is basically saying when the first opcode is this number, it's going to run the add command. We can make it whatever we want. Let's just make it uh, 25. And that's going to run self.add. So that's step number two. Step number one, remember, is writing the actual function. Step two is assigning a value to actually call that function. And step three is going to come up here to the instruction dictionary in the program class and say that 25 corresponds to, uh, I wish I could type, corresponds to add. 
Perfect. So what we want to do now is actually write the add command in our program. So we're going to come here to the third line and say that 2503. So let's walk through this program and see what we get at first. So first is 10, which stores the value of 40 in the first register. 2015, which stores the value of 15 in the second register. Uh, I did not mean to flip that. And 2503, which means add, the function we just wrote, add the values of 40 and 15 into the third index of RAM. So let's run it and see how this works. We initialize it, fetch, decode, and execute. We load 40. 2015 is going to load 15 into the second register. So now this is a section that we just wrote. So 2503, we're going to decode it. That means add. When we actually execute it, it's going to at the third index of RAM. So 0, 1, 2, and 3. This 4009 is going to become the sum of 40 and 15, which is 55. So perfect. We have an add command in our little program. Let's do the same thing, but let's make it subtract. So we can actually just copy all this code down here. Let's just rename it to sub. And let's make it a little bit more, uh, let's say different than the add command. Let's say that it's going to subtract the value of register 2 from 3. So it's the same idea with storing it in RAM. We're just subtracting 2 from 3. And we can make it subtract 1 from 3 or 0 from 3, whatever we want. Let's just say 2 from 3. Remember, the second step is to actually add a number to call it. So we're going to say that else if self.op1 equals, um, we can say that 35 means subtract, and that's going to call self.sub. Alrighty, and then we have to add it to our instruction dictionary. So 35 corresponds to sub. All right, so remember to actually use what we just wrote. We have to write it in the program. So let's say that the very first step is going to load the value of 70 in register C. And then the second instruction is load into register D the value of, uh, let's say, 22. The third is going to be to call upon that subtract function, which we defined as opcode 35. So we're going to say 35 and store the value of the subtraction in the zeroth index. So we're going to run this and see what happens. Initialize, we fetch, we get 3070. Decode, that's load C, that's going to make that 70. Fetch, decode, execute means 4022. Load the value of 22 into the fourth register. This is the section we just wrote, so decode, that is subtract. Recall that subtract means subtract the value of register 2 from 3. So 0, 1, 70 minus 55 and store it in the zeroth index. Execute and we get 48. So this is pretty simple how we just go about from very fundamental levels of arithmetic. Keep in mind we're working from the registers and we can make these things a lot more complicated but let's just make it simple for now. So I hope this video is helpful. It's just a very basic assembly little program that I wrote and for sure we're going to be making more videos about this in the future so if you have any questions about how this, uh, how this program works or any questions in general please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Thanks everyone for watching.